As a video editor, I always prefer audio and video when they're recorded separately to be jam synced with timecode with a device like a technical sync. And if that's unavailable, you can use quality scratch audio that's recorded directly into the camera to sync things up in post. But sometimes we need better sync. So here's the B and P trick. We're going anti-AI today. This is manual craft editing for when technology fails us and there was never a hand clap like this or a slate marker on set. Take nine, Mark. Thankfully, whenever a person says a word that starts with B or P, we actually have a visual sync point built into the image that's on the screen. The B or P can be our clapper board. In DaVinci Resolve 19, on the media page, you not only have an automated syncing feature by selecting all the clips in the bin, and then right-clicking and saying auto sync audio. This can synchronize using the waveforms or the time code, but you can also go full on manual in here instead, or simply just do some one frame fixes on source clips as well. Like maybe your time code was off by a frame. Here's how that works. So we've got some video clips, audio clips. Let's drag those into Resolve 19's media page. And you can see they were indeed, they were recorded separately. And now the media page here in Resolve is separate from and different from the edit page because it has a cool audio tab up here with this waveform section that is custom built for syncing audio. Now let's give us a little bit extra space to work. I'm gonna close the media storage tab over here. And we can also expand this upper right section here expand this tab so it fills top to bottom. It just gives us a little bit more room to work and, and see and listen to things. Now, if I scrub my mouse right now, I don't hear anything. And that's because there's a feature that's called audio scrubbing and it's turned off. So if you don't hear anything and you move your, your cursor around and you wanna hear something, cause that's useful to sync stuff, what you wanna do is go under the timeline menu down to audio scrubbing and turn that on. The keyboard shortcut's gonna be shift S as the default. Um, and what that means is you can use your arrow keys to sort of find, you know, choose that position for the B and P that we wanna be syncing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the clip that aligns with this audio clip. You can hear, hear that we have a little bit of audio that's coming through as I move my cursor on there. What I'm actually gonna look for first is just the the word B, so if I use the arrow keys, you can see my mouth is starting to open with the word B, and it's fully open right there. So this is the great thing about B and P. You can actually use those as a clapperboard. So maybe I use this frame right here, and I want to find I want to find where does that sync up with the playhead over here. So what I'll do is I'll listen. But sometimes we need better sync. So here's the B. All right, so take a look. This right here, this is the B that we're looking to line up. I just need to move this with my playhead. So I select in this window, and we can tell this window is selected because I have this red bar. I'll show you how to get to that at the end of the tutorial if you're interested. But this window is selected. Click in it to make sure the arrow keys left and right. Right, so that playhead right there is parked directly on that B. We have the picture loaded over here. All you need to do once you have the audio and video selected is in the lower right, this little chain link icon, click that button and it will marry and sync those. So if I choose that, now those are locked together. B and P trick. And so we have the good audio synced with the picture, right? That had scratch audio. And this can be used to refine things because all you have to do to unlink this and fix things later on is click this chain link icon here to unlink it, move picture to a different frame. So I've selected this window. You can see this red bar tells me I'm in this frame. And let's say I would need to move it back a frame to this frame and then hit this button. Now I've locked those together at that specific frame. So it's locking this playhead with this nice big long red playhead. And you can see these giant waveforms, which is unlike any other editing software I've ever used. The other way that you can tell that something is linked up that has synced audio is if you go to the list view over here instead of the thumbnail view, you can see there is a synced audio tab that's available. Now it might not be there for you right away. So the way you get this is you right click on the, the header area and it's down here synced audio. Just have a checkbox for that. As well as another one that can be useful is the audio offset um, checkbox, and that just lets you know, you can see the, the, the frame difference between the, the two different clips as they are on disc. So if you wanted to manually change this, one thing you can do, I don't really re recommend doing it this way, you could change this here to like 304, and that actually moved the sync over here by one frame. 
What I do suggest you do though, is use timecode if it's available, or use the scratch audio if that's available in that order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this sync here and show you how you would do the timecode sync, and then how do you refine it if it's not perfectly working, right? To unsync this, I'll select the clip, hit the little chain link icon over here. Oh, in fact, there's a keyboard shortcut for this. If you've ever linked audio and video on the timeline, it's the same one. You just have to make sure that audio is selected up here in the viewer. Hit Command Option L. So I'm hitting Command Option L. And you can see that undoes this manually pressing of this button over here. You could push this button if you wanted to, but you could also hit Command Option L. Or on a Windows machine, it would probably be Alt Control L is my guess. You'll have to let me know down below because I don't have a Windows machine. But I'm going to undo the sync here so I can show you the timecode method. So that is not synced up. The timecode method, you can see I have start timecode because I'm using the tentacle syncs. Select all the clips, right click, go to auto sync audio. Okay. And with this, we have two options we've got timecode and we got waveform. I'm going to choose timecode. It's instantaneous, it doesn't take any analysis. It's just using a, a number. Hit sync. And you can see, clearly see, I've got something on the audio offsets and synced audio over here on these columns. If I want to refine this and make any subtle changes, sometimes we need better sync. So here's the B. So I'm going to use the arrow keys. Again, we got timeline audio scrubbing turned on, so I can go left and right arrows. See how I have a little bit of an issue? I'm starting to say the word B, or I'm hearing the word B before I see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink this over here. And instead of pushing the button, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut we just learned, Command Option L. That unlinks it. I'm going to come over here to my picture, select this window. I've got this red box that lets me know that box is, or that window is selected. I'm going to use the arrow keys on this to get this lined up to where my mouth is opening, where I say B, right? Right there, I would say it opened. So it's a, I would say it was about a frame off. Now you could choose there, or you could choose one frame later. If the content, if the person's far away, it might make more sense for it to, you know, be a little bit more open. Let's say we wanted to sync those two frames. All you do is this playhead is now in line with this playhead. You choose this button again, or hit Command Option L. It links those up. And so now when I play the B and P trick, we've refined the sync. It's that easy. All you need to do is unlink it, fix it by a frame or two, and then relink it, and then you're you're good, you're solid. Before I go on to the edit page and a couple other tricks, I do want to show you something that is available and I've shown before and I kind of don't recommend it anymore. On the media storage, you can pull footage in with the timecode offset. So if you select your clip and you right click on it and say, uh, it is called add uh, into media pool with offset, what this allows you to do is do an offset to the source timecode. And the reason I don't recommend you really do this and you just sync it properly with the audio tab over here is because if you change the source timecode on import, your source timecode that lives in the media pool, meaning this column right here, does not actually represent what the thing is on the disk. So if you work with other people and other editing softwares and you give them just the source footage, you're not going to have XMLs, AFs, any sort of timeline format that's going to link stuff across between different applications. It's only going to be good in this Resolve project that you have set up. Two more real quick tips. If you have multiple microphones and you want to just control what you're actually putting down to the timeline, select the clip, make sure it's loaded in the viewer. Again, you want to make sure your timeline audio scrubbing is turned on. That's Shift S. That'll let you hear it as you're previewing. Go to the inspector, not under the file tab where you think it would be. It's under the file tab instead of audio. So under the file tab, go down here. And as you move your cursor, you can preview those channels. And so let's say I don't want the mix left and mix right. I just want the SM48. All I need to do is uncheck those boxes. And then when I come over here and I want to make an edit to the timeline, you know, just drag it down to the timeline. Now I'm just pulling that one single channel and you can listen. We're not doubling up with the stereo mix. I always prefer audio and video when they're recorded separately. Now the idea is at any point you still have metadata that you can swap these microphones out at any stage in the process. So like on the Fairlight page, if you were doing some finishing audio stuff, let's make this a little bit bigger. 
Z or Shift Z to sure. zoom this. I can change the microphone by right clicking on it, going to the clip attributes, which are always in a different spot. Never understood why. They're right here. And I can change this here to say, what if we want to listen to a different microphone or maybe just even the embedded channel one again? You can click that and you can see we've got audio and video when they're recording. the terrible internal audio. Let's say we want to go back to the SM48 microphone, right click on it, go to clip attributes, which is down here at the bottom. Let's choose SM48. And you can see we've got an updated SM48 there separately to be jam synced with time code with a device like a technical sync. So I would strongly suggest if you're gonna be changing microphones, do this on the Fairlight page because I have found some weird buggy sort of things with the cache on the edit page when you change microphones out. Um, uh, let me know if you're experiencing that too. Maybe it's just a Resolve 19 thing. So to get these nice red bars to appear to let you know, oh, I'm in this window or I'm in this window, it's an editing preference. You go up under the DaVinci Resolve menu there, preferences and then it'll be a user preference. And then we'll actually look at UI settings and you wanna use show focus indicators in the user interface. And that'll give you those red indicators. I find that super helpful when you're learning keyboard shortcuts because if you do a keyboard shortcut on this window and this one selected, it might actually act and work totally different than if you have this window selected down here. Hey, welcome if you're new here to Creative Video Tips. I'm Chadwick, a New York-based Resolve commercial finishing artist and master trainer. I love all the nerdy Resolve tips and I especially appreciate you and your questions. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.